Good morning and welcome to The Morning Scoop for Tuesday, July 7th, 2020. This is your daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Orr, and today I'm joined by Mick Walker. He's one of our recruiting analysts at Buckeye Scoop. Mick, welcome back. Thanks for having me on a third time, and I appreciate coming on every time. Mick just wrote about some of the biggest names to know in football recruiting for the state of Ohio in the class of 2023. Those are guys who are going to be just going into their sophomore years, so there's still a lot of time before they'll be playing college football. But the early indications are this is looking like maybe it could be a pretty strong class in the state of Ohio. Uh, Mick, let's start with Brennan Vernon. He's just the latest in what has been a very incredible run of top-tier pass rushers in the state. Uh, Jonathan Cooper, Tyreek Smith, Zach Harrison, Jack Sawyer, all guys who ended up Ohio State uh, in state. Mick, what can you tell us about Vernon's game? Yeah, so I got the chance to see Vernon earlier, earlier last year, I think around week four, week five against Salone High School. Has a few different studs out there, and then that was after I saw him the first time this summer. And you could definitely just see that all the measurables are there. He's six five, he's two forty five. He looks like that Division one stud defensive end. And obviously, there's people that call Jack Sawyer the third Bosa between Joey and Nick. And I mean, off the if you just look at Vernon, he'd probably fall right in line with those. The thing that separates Jack from I think Jack from where he was going into his sophomore year and even Jack now from Brennan, is the fact that Brennan just needs to work on his hand usage and being able to use different types of moves to get into the backfield and get pass, get sacks and get more statistics. But he's a guy that plays very hard and has great length, and he's a very smart football player as well. It's just he's still young, and he's just working on getting some of those techniques down before he can really be the next, I mean, the fourth Bosa, if he can get to that level, I guess. Hand usage is something that Larry Johnson just preaches and preaches and preaches. And if you watch the defensive linemen going through pregame warmups, there's a lot of hand fighting stuff that they do just to get those get those offensive tackles hands away from their body so they can get around the corner. The Buckeyes have pulled several good players out of that mentor program uh, that uh, Vernon is a part of. Uh, Noah Potter, Ryan Jacoby, both came from mentor to Ohio State in 2019. How likely is Vernon to join them in your in your opinion? You know, as you mentioned right there, with Coach Johnson being very t- technique based when it comes to hand usage, he's also a very hands on observant coach, and he likes to see all pretty much all his defensive linemen in person, sort of see him work out, at least size them up body type wise. If you can't if you can't see him work out, and that's the thing that's really hindering Vernon. And a few of these guys are on this list from possibly getting an offer and getting a chance to play at Ohio State. Is I think Larry Johnson just wants to see him be able to move him live and see what he's working with beyond beyond the film but if he he's probably the likeliest out of this whole list to get an offer because i think he's the clear early favorite to be the top guy in ohio it's just whether whether larry johnson wants to wait and see him or if he can he's eventually probably mauled over the film enough to go all right this is the guy and if he does offer i think it's ohio state's battle to lose and like you said there with no potter ryan jacoby i mean mentor also produced mitchell trubisky who went on the obviously be a top top draft pick. I, I know Bill has told me this, and Bill has told a few other people this. There's people at Mentor that thought Brennan was, is and will be the best player to come out of Mentor by the time he graduates. And that, like you said, with those players that they've had recently, that's a pretty high standard for him to have up there. Yeah, if you're the best player to come out of a high school that produced a number two overall NFL draft pick, that's uh, there's, there's not a lot of room to improve on from that. So, yeah, that's that's pretty high praise. Uh, next up is a jumbo athlete, is how you you uh, described him, named Luke Montgomery. Uh, he's from Finley, Ohio. It sounds like there's some question maybe as to where exactly he'll end up playing at the college level, but not a lot of question that he will probably be a good prospect wherever he ends up. Yeah, if you talk to Luke, he'd probably tell you he's a defensive end tight end. If you talk to the, even probably his dad or some of the college coaches, they probably view him as maybe defensive end, may, maybe a defensive tackle or even an offensive tackle, which is where I personally think he he's best suited to end up. And this is a guy that's a, a great athlete for just being in the trenches. He's 6'5", 260. And he, if you go on his Twitter page or whatever, if you see some of the pictures he posted just after his workouts and stuff, he is a very chiseled guy early on before even touching the field in his sophomore season. And this, not only, not to mention, this is a guy that's playing competitive AAU basketball this, this spring with them, spring and summer with one of the best teams in Indiana. And some people might know him beyond the fact that he played with them. LeBron James Jr. Bronny on the AU circuit last year and made and was one of the be- um, one of the better post players on that team. But as for Luke's game itself, he's 
like I said, he's a big athlete. He could be either play. He's going to play in the trenches, but it's just a matter of where. I, I'll tell him all the time that he's an offensive tackle, and I think he wants to sort of see if he can stay on the on the defensive line. But I mean, if he if he does stay stay at left tackle, he's got the length, he's got the he's got the athleticism to be very good. But he also does have the length, and like that same length and athleticism flips over to the defensive side and makes him a very intriguing defensive line prospect. It's more a matter of where what he wants to do and what the coaches want him to do once he gets to a college. Next up, there's a familiar name, a familiar family name anyway, uh, Alex Sonny Stiles. He's the son of former Ohio State linebacker Lorenzo Stiles, the brother of Lorenzo Stiles Jr., who is a four-star receiver who's committed to Notre Dame in the class of 2021. There's still a lot of questions about where he might end up position-wise, but what can you tell us about Sonny Stiles? Yeah, as I, as I put right off the start on my, in the article, if I would have put Alex in my 2023 basketball piece that came out a few days prior, nobody would have been able to dispute it with me. Uh, Alex is probably – probably the best athlete already in his grade for that 2023 class. And he, he didn't get to play a snap of football last year, but he already does have one offer from Indiana. And that's just because if you go turn on the basketball film, you see physicality, you see athleticism, you see speed, you see strength. And that's just as he moves on the basketball court. I got a, I got a chance to see him personally this spring when he was moving around doing a basketball workout. And you could just see the size, the speed, everything coming together on the hardwood. And it all translates over to the, all transitions over to the gridiron, and I, I believe Mark said it best. But um, Mark, the the word was that if he was healthy to start last season, he would have started in their defense that won a state title as a freshman. And freshmen don't often start a program like Carrington Central because of how talent laden their roster typically is. Next up is Trevor Carter from Ironton. He's a high school teammate of 2021 Ohio State commit Reed Carrico, and it sounds like he's another guy who's likely to end up somewhere on defense. Yeah, he's sort of similar to Alex or Sonny Styles, who we've talked about above. But he's a little bit, he's a little bit bigger, a little bit not that not exactly the same at, special athlete that Alex is. Um, personally, Trevor's probably the guy that I know least about on this list. He, I just haven't been able to go down and go down to see Reed and Trevor down at Ironton, but they're both guys that hold a few Division One offers, and I know that. There are guys that work hard and they, they're trying to make it out of an area that doesn't necessarily produce a lot of Division One talent, so they have an extra chip on their shoulder. But he has garnered a lot of attention from not only Ohio State, but schools like Penn State. Um, Arkansas is an SEC program that's offered him. He's got ACC offers, Big 12 offers. And this is only after one year of playing on a division. Um, on a, in a, sorry. It's only after one year of playing varsity football where his teammate run to the state title with Reed and him pretty much carrying them to the title. Regardless, he's just somebody that is a very good athlete and will likely end up on defense at a Division One, um, a Division One school. And if everything ends up the way he probably would like at Ohio State, yeah, you mentioned not a lot of kids come out of that Ironton area. I think Marcus Williams was the last guy to come out of Ironton and play for the Buckeyes. So that would be, I think, more than a decade ago at this point. So that's uh, it has it has been a minute, but they may have may have a couple good ones coming out of there in the next few years. You also had a couple honorable honorable mention names, uh, Kobe Gorman from the Powerhouse Pickerington Central program that just produced Ty Hamilton for the Buckeyes, and Anthony Brown from Springfield. Those are guys that didn't play a lot as freshmen, but already hold Power 5 offers as uh, guys heading into their sophomore years. That's probably a pretty good sign for both of those guys. Yeah, um, like you said, Kobe plays a powerhouse program that obviously also holds um, Alex Styles, who we talked about above, but... Ty Hamilton wants them in front of them this year. They have two guys in the 2022 class that also hold Division One offers that were sitting in front of him, taking up some playing time. So Kobe didn't get to touch the field very much, but he's he's a very gifted athlete as well. He play, I believe, he does play a little bit of basketball, but on the gridiron, he has the he has the measurables. He has everything that uh, that people look for. It's just getting on the field and actually seeing him move and do what he's projected and what everybody thinks he can do. And as for Anthony, I saw I, I had the pleasure of seeing Springfield at the end of the season twice last year in the postseason. Um, he's a guy. Obviously, there's if there's one thing coaches can't necessarily teach, it's speed. And Anthony has a ton of that. Anthony is that's why he held an offer from Kentucky coming into his freshman year. He's clocked probably in that in a, a sub five range. I'm not exactly sure of the number. It's probably in the four five to four six range, which is very impressive for his stature and his um for his age, but beyond that, he's, he's just somebody that I think Mark, Mark actually has a piece up on the website yesterday about um, Anthony and how, just how high his potential could be and what, how good of a player he is. So go check that out and you hear a little bit more about Anthony, but 
feed someone you can't teach. And that's what college is see on Anthony Brown. Well, Mick, I know you have been traveling across the country or across the state uh, several times in the last few weeks. What, do you have anything coming up in the next week or so that you'd like to plug that, that uh, people should be looking out for on Buckeye Scoop? Yeah, I, I, a while back when I did a little bit of a chat room session, you guys asked me to lengthen up my videos and my interviews a little bit. So we got a six-minute long video with Kaylin at the Ohio State's 2021 um, forward commit. That should be up on the website. I think it came up on the, on the YouTube channel yesterday, so go check, go check out the Buckeye Scoop YouTube channel and watch that video with Kaylin. Um, I got a few more videos with uh, Rayvon Griffin, Ohio's top 2023 basketball player out of Cincinnati Taft High School. That's another lengthy one in about three minutes that um, people will probably enjoy. He's, he's a really great kid, both of them are, and um, been floating around. I'm hoping to catch Michi and Kalen play live here soon. So that, those are the travel plans in the works right now. And if you're looking for our YouTube channel, you can find it at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. We made it pretty easy for you. And you can find us on social media. Uh, at Buckeye Scoop on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Buckeye Scoop. This is Instagram.com slash Buckeye Scoop. Like this is, we are making this as easy as possible for you. So go ahead and subscribe, follow us in all of those places to find uh, more from Mick, as well as the rest of our incredible team, like Bill Green, Mark Givler, and Alex Gleitman, all some of the top names in the business. And now they're all working in the same place at BuckeyeScoop.com. So Mick, thank you for joining us and be sure to also check out the Gives in the Bank podcast, which is Mark and Bill sharing their insights and some great recruiting stories, as well as around the Oval, which is Alex interviewing former future Buckeyes. So you can find those on Apple Podcasts or your podcast platform of choice. Make sure you subscribe there and leave us a rating and review as well. That helps us reach a bigger audience. Thank you guys for listening. Have a great Tuesday and we'll talk to you tomorrow.